Hello everyone. Today in this video, we will discuss about pathogenesis of the rheumatoid arthritis. Before going to the detailed discussion, let's start with the basic, the joint anatomy. Here I am drawing a knee joint. Knee joint is a synovial joint. That means it joins bones or cartilage with a fibrous joint capsule that is continuous with the periosteum of the joint bones. So here, these are two bones which are covered with articular cartilage at the ends. Articular cartilage is a type of connective tissue that acts like a protective cushion between two gliding bones. Here is the fibrous joint capsule which continues with the periosteum. This fibrous joint capsule is lined with a synovial membrane. It has cells which produce synovial fluid in the synovial cavity. Here you can see the synovial cavity. Synovial fluid helps in lubrication and provide nutrition. Synovial membrane also has blood vessels and lymphatics running through it. In rheumatoid arthritis, there will be inflammation of the synovial membrane, which is called synovitis, which can cause pain and swelling of the joint. Also, there will be bone and cartilage erosion and angiogenesis. Now, let's see what is the mechanism behind all those macroscopic changes. The pathogenic mechanism of synovial inflammation is likely to result from a complex interplay of genetic, environmental and immunologic factors that produces dysregulation of the immune system and breakdown in self tolerance. This happens long before the appearance of any clinical symptoms. You may found antibodies like rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP antibodies in patient sera many years before the onset of clinical disease. Now there should be an autoantigen against which these autoantibodies work. There is a process called citrullination in which amino acid arginine is converted into citrulline. Sometimes our immune cells fail to recognize this protein as self-antigen. They recognize citrulline containing regions of several proteins such as filaggrin, type 2 collagen, vimentin as foreign antigen. This citrullination of cellular proteins is mediated by genetic factors and many other environmental factors like smoking, pathogen like Porphyromenas gingivalis and silicon dust exposure. These antigens are picked up by the antigen presenting cells and get carried to the lymph nodes. In lymph nodes, CD4 positive T cells become activated by antigen presenting cells through interaction between the T-cell receptors and class 2 MSC peptide antigen with co-stimulation through the CD28, CD80 pathway as well as other pathways. Synovial CD4 positive T-cells differentiate into T-helper 1 and T-helper 17 cells. They have distinctive cytokine profile. CD4 positive T-helper cells secrete interferon gamma, T1 necrosis factor alpha and lymphotoxin beta which activate B cells. B cells then differentiate into autoantibody producing plasma cells. Now these plasma cells secrete autoantibodies like rheumatoid factors and anticyclic citrullinated peptides. These T cells and autoantibodies enter the circulation and reach the joint. Now autoantibodies like rheumatoid factor which is an IgM antibody targets the FC portion or constant portion of altered IgG antibodies and form immune complexes. Another antibody is anti-CCP antibody which targets citrullinated proteins. Now they activate complement system and destroy the local tissue. In the meantime, T affected cells stimulate synovial macrophage and fibroblast to secrete pro-inflammatory mediators. One of them is tumor necrosis factor alpha. TNF-alpha upregulates the addition molecules on the endothelial cells and promote leukocyte influx into the joint. It also stimulates the production of other inflammatory mediators such as interleukin-1, interleukin-6 and granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor or GMCSA. All those inflammatory cytokines are responsible for synovial inflammation. They also stimulate angiogenesis which brings more inflammatory cells to the joint. They also promote pain receptor sensitizing pathway. Inflammatory cytokines increase the expression of proteins on the surface of T cell known as rank ligand or rank L. 
Rankle allows T cell to bind rank protein on the surface of pre osteoclast and convert them into activated osteoclast. These activated osteoclasts are responsible for bone destruction. Inflammatory cytokines also activate synovial cells. They secrete proteases like matrix metalloproteinase, which can damage the cartilage. TNF alpha has a critically important function in regulating the balance between the bone destruction and bone formation. It upregulates the expression of DKK1, which can then internalize Wnt receptors on osteoblast precursors. Wnt is a soluble mediator that promotes osteoblastogenesis. That means there will be new osteoblast formation and new bone formation. In rheumatoid arthritis, bone formation is inhibited through the Wnt pathway due to the action of elevated levels of DKK1. That's all about the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. In future videos, we will discuss about the signs and symptoms and treatment of the rheumatoid arthritis.